Welcome back to round one where we play just the beginning of a game, usually, yeah. to give you a taste of what it's like. Today, we're going to play it by ear because we're playing Worms, the board game. Uh, first of all, Worms is very special to both me and Ryan. That's true. I mean, I'm a little older than Ryan. I've played Worms since the original Worms, for uh, sure. I, I haven't, but I spent a huge chunk of my childhood uh, playing middle Armageddon. school years playing Worms Armageddon. Yeah. My sister and my best friend at the time, whose name was also Ryan, by the way, two Ryans right. playing Worms. Uh, we used, used to play this game so much. I would make teams. Uh, each team would be based on different Final Fantasy games. So if you needed to know how nerdy I am. The character names. There you go. Yeah, I had nice. my like, Final Fantasy seven team, my six team, whatever. Uh, suffice to say, this is bringing back a lot of nostalgia. It is, because as we played this before recording, we were just sitting there thinking and, and feeling nostalgic over playing the video game. Uh, and this is the tabletop version of the game. And yeah. I can tell you right now, it recreates a lot of that same experience, the same chaotic fun of worms being blasted everywhere off into the water. Yeah, that's that's a good point because I, when I say nostalgia, I don't want it to feel like they just pasted some nostalgia onto a game and it's like, oh, I remember an oil barrel. No, like what you're doing in the game and the way that things resolve, <laughs> yeah. it, it, it captures that, that chaoticness, which is one thing when I heard they were doing a worms board game, I was a little concerned. How do you adapt that into tabletop? Yeah. And by, by making it absolutely as chaotic as possible, I think they've kind of nailed that. Yeah, we've been playing Worms for a long time, but we've only been playing the tabletop version for about a week. Uh, we're going to play it for you right now. And what I was going to say is we're going to play this one by ear in terms of how much we play it. Uh, one round won't be enough, I don't think. So we want to play it well into it. You might see it unfold very quickly. It could because be one round could end the game. A game of Worms can go crazy and be over very quickly. And if you've ever played the video game, a game of Worms can be such that at the end, Ryan has one worm way over on one side of the board, I have one on the other, and we're just trying desperately to chuck grenades and things at each sure. other that entire time. Uh, but what you have here is the board. This is set up for a two-player game. We set this up beforehand, but setting up this game is kind of part of the experience. Each player uh, puts a tile out uh, next to the wind token, and then you take some crates, some mines, some oil oh, barrels, worms. and then all the worms, and in this case, four per team. You put them all in one pool, and you take turns placing one out at a time. Then, and only then, do you determine which team you have. Right, which is why I'm yellow and David's red. Yeah, which is <laughs> odd for us. It's because the opposite. It is going to be a little weird, but we did uh, random. And this does a, a, a cool thing, because when you're placing the worms out, you don't want to necessarily put them in bad positions because you might end up being that team. So right, exactly. You need to kind of balance your setup just in case you're either side. I think that's what you'll find when setting this up is yeah. that everyone's going to try to keep it as even and yeah. fair as possible, which I think we've pretty much we'll done. We'll see how it goes. Uh, you can't also have more than three things, as they call it, in any one hex. And things are a number of things. They're all the things we talked about, but they also can be you know, craters as things get yeah. destroyed or tiles get destroyed yeah. later. Um, we've got the main board. We've got these reference cards to kind of remind us of all the different things and how they work. We've got a deck here, which is the drop deck. Uh, there's three cards for each player in there. It's basically kind of an event that happens at the end of each turn. And then the final card is the... Sudden death card. Sudden death. And if we get that, just like in the video game, if you're still alive when the timer runs out, it's a good chance that... All the worms are dead before you get to the end, in which case that's just the end of the game and whoever's left standing wins. Yeah, then there's multiple sudden death cards. We put one randomly yeah. at the bottom, so we'll see what that is, maybe. You've got some water tiles because these are going to replace uh, these hexes yeah. as they get sunk and destroyed. And then, of course, we've got all the things set up on the board here. And we started with the wind direction randomly by rolling a die yeah. pointing up. And you'll see if you've played worms, you know wind is a factor. Uh, it's definitely a factor in this game, and it's constantly changing. Uh, so we'll see how this goes. All right. So I ran, and we did this completely random. Uh, yellow goes first. Yep. Uh, there's a number on each card, so whoever has the lowest number goes first. So in this case, uh, yellow does go first. So I'll just go ahead and jump right in and kind of explain the things that are happening uh, as we do it. The first thing you always do in your turn is activate one of your worms. Now, there's no order to this. You don't have to activate all of them before you go back. You could literally just activate one worm throughout the entire game. Uh, I'm going to choose this worm right here for a couple reasons. First of all, if you activate mm. a worm in the same space as a supply crate, you get to pick up that supply crate. That's good because we start with a hand of five basic items or weapons. Uh, they're not all weapons. Some of them are defensive. 
Um, but we start with four of the same and then one random one. Yeah, these are the four uh, of the same anyway. Oh, I shouldn't show my random one. Oh, I could have taken a peek there. We start with a ninja rope, a bazooka, a girder, and an Uzi. And then we take yeah. one more uh, that's from that deck. It could be one of those same ones again, or it could be a different starting yeah, but that, weapon. But that's it for the starting weapons. Everything else that we gain, we're going to draw from this weapons deck, which has a variety of different weapons and, again, some defensive items in it. So I get to draw one for having that supply crate. Uh, What'd you get, Ryan? Just kidding! Don't tell me. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna tell you. So, uh, I might use this. I'm is sure cool. I'll find out. This is cool. I might use this. Uh, but we're going to then move on to your uh, healing. If your wound was damaged, the heal. It's the first round of the game. Then you get to move twice, and you can either inch or jump. Inching just moves you one little space. Jumping can move you two. But you could bounce because worms are bouncy. If you've played the game, jumping you, is dangerous. Jumping is dangerous. So I'm gonna inch. I'm actually going to inch over here and pick up a second supply crate. Oh, that's bogus. They ended up right next to each other. That is a little bogus. So I'll get a second weapon here. Uh, ooh, okay. And then the next phase is to play a weapon card. So you're going to play a weapon card, and oh, there's a variety of things that are going to happen when you play a weapon card. I'm choosing the bazooka here. You'll see the title. You'll also see a number of icons. So this is going to tell me that I get to use this card, and then I get to move. So the card is saying, Target a direct hex. That's a hex that's in my line. And then there's a, this little accuracy number. Now, if you've played Worms, again, they've kind of adapted this idea that the wind is blowing. Things might move in a different direction than what you plan. So wherever I target with this target hex might not end up being where my bazooka actually lands. No. But I'm going to start by targeting this red uh, worm right here. This is one of David's worms. And then I'm going to have to roll uh, some of these accuracy dice. So it says accuracy four. So I get to have four dice. And then this would subtract dice if I was shooting far away. The farther you shoot, the less dice you're actually going to get to roll. But I'm targeting an adjacent hex. So I get to roll four dice. And I get to keep any of the results of my choice. So my hope here is that I roll one that keeps the target right where it is. And in this case, that did not happen. So I have three options that are all the wind or one oh option. Oh boy. Ooh, this one moves it back towards me. Uh, Choose which that one. I might though, because, what? oh no, this is both me. These are both mine, Never mind. <laughs> I'm gonna choose the wind. Uh, unfortunately, that means that the- Bazooka, bazooka flies, flies off, flies off into and splashes the water. into the water. So, Man, that's too and bad. And that's the world of worms. And that was my bazooka. And then the bazooka gives me one extra move. Um, I think I'm going to move back to here. I don't want to be necessarily, I don't want to necessarily have two of my worms in the same spot because that becomes so juicy. Okay. Um, then at the uh, after my action is done, I'm going to draw one of these drop cards. And this is going to drop in some supplies. And like we said, also act as the game. It's timer. So supply. Place a supply crate in the emptiest hex. So right here, because that is completely empty. And then place a supply crate in the emptiest hex again. Now I have some options. A lot of these hexes only have one thing in them. So I can choose. It's my choice what I want to do. I'm going to drop it right here where I am. Even though I know you can walk in there and take it, maybe you won't. Uh, you probably will. All right, and then change the wind direction. So anytime we do that, we're going to roll the die again. And in this case, it doesn't change. So the wind is still nice. pointing north-ish. That is the end for me. All right, I am going to activate this worm yep. right here. Uh, and I don't have to heal or anything. So I'm gonna inch here. Nice. Yeah. I'm gonna maybe drop in the sound effects from worms because I'm thinking of, a, of them I know, right? the way they sound when they kind of just like inch pick over. Pick up that supply, supply crate. What'd you get? Uh, stuff. A good weapon? We'll see. We'll All see. right. Uh, and then I'm going to inch back. Okay. Then I am going to, oh boy. What do you got? What do you got? Lean into that chaos. I'm going to bazooka Oh. this hex. I'll show you how a bazooka is meant to be used. All right, maybe. Am. You've still got only four accuracy dice. Maybe you'll roll four wind dice as well. We'll see what happens. Ooh, so two wind dice, a four or a five. 
four or a five. Oh, a so five. moving here to where we both are, moving down here to the mine, hmm. or it's following the wind and it's going. You know what? I'm gonna play the. You're gonna come game. down to us. I'm gonna choose the five so that, that it's gonna move the target to here. Oh boy. The right side. Yes. Yep, that's the right side. Moves the target to there, and then uh, it says blast hex. Yeah. So, so the first thing we're gonna do is put a crater token in that space. Uh, a crater token uh, is a thing. It takes up one of the three possible spaces. If there's ever three of these on a hex, it gets turned into water. And then everybody that's on there gets blasted away and damaged. Both of us. So you have to decide your own fate. Which of these worms are you rolling for first? They can get scattered in different directions here. Yeah, we're both damaged, so, so we'll be on our sides to begin with. Yeah, which one are you doing? And I'm going to roll me first. You're going to roll you first, this red yeah. one? Six. Not bad. No. Nope. Right over here. He's safe. And then me. A two. Hey! Bounce this way. Wow. That was lucky. That Whew. was very lucky. Now, the thing in this game is when you're damaged, you're laying on your sides. If you're on your sides, you're vulnerable. Yep. If you get hit again, yep. you're out. Yep. So it's unlike the video game where there's sort of like hit points. They come back up yeah. if it comes your turn again and they're still there. They, they make it a little easier, a little more streamlined. If I would you say. choose that worm to activate. Right, that's a thing too. <laughs> uh, all right, that was your card. So draw your drop card. What do you got? Uh, mine. And a crate. So place a supply crate in the emptiest hex. Oh, uh, that is going to be. There's a lot of hexes with one thing. Or there's um, three hexes I'm with gonna one I'm going to place thing. it here. Okay. Um, and then place a mine in the same hex, then change wind direction. Ooh. That is a four, so the wind is blowing southwardly now. Interesting. Yeah, that wind can make things a little dangerous. Um, if you're on the so southern border yeah. now and you get hit, there's a decent chance you might just get blown up into the water. All right. Done? You're, yeah, you're All right, I'm going to go. All right, this guy's going to go over here, um, and he's going to move, uh, just going to inch over here to pick up this supply crate. Nice. I mean, I, I, mean, not I got nice. to do that. Uh, and then I'm going to... Ooh. Oh, I, don't, right. I do not like how many things Ryan has in his hand. And then I'm going to inch again. Um, and this is something uh, interesting because I'm moving into this oh, space. Oh, you're going to prod. I have to prod. There cannot be four things in one space. So when you're prodding, you have to choose mm. worms first before you can prod up other things. You have to prod a worm. If it was just me, I'd have to prod myself, but it's not. I've got David here. So he's going to get prodded somewhere. Maybe there's a lot of empty water spaces like around. This. I'm hoping Let's to hope just for the best. plop him into the water here. Hope for the best. Uh, six. That is still water. That is still water. Bloop. <laughs> Into the water, into the water, and out of the game, and out of the game. Just that little There's prod. One worm down. Now, however, I don't love that I've got two worms in the same space. So, I'm going to uh, play a card now. My action card, our weapon card, is going to be the Uzi. So I can move, do the card effect, and then move again. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to move one space here. I'm going to target a direct hex within two, and that can be the hex that I'm in as well. So I will target my hex, and I can damage any one thing in the hex. Are you going to damage yourself? I'm not. Oh. I'm sorry. I'm going to damage Second you. Second worm damaged. down. Like we said, this game is meant I'm to at, be fast and chaotic. I'm at 50%. Now I can move one more move. I'm going to do that and try to like space myself out so you can't wreck me. All right, and then uh, that's the end of my turn, so I'm going to draw another drop card. I mean, we're only doing six turns before sudden death anyway. Oh, boy. Uh, supply crate and an oil barrel in the emptiest hex. That would be this one now. There's a, both of those. Oh, boy. Uh, and I would remove up to three fire, which we don't have any, and then I will change the wind direction to two. So okay, I like two. Going I like two. That way. All right. I feel pretty good about knocking out two worms in one turn. That felt good. Okay, I'm gonna try something dangerous here. You did that already once. Uh, All right, you still got a worm thing. laying down. Uh, I do because... And he's in a hex with another one of your worms. That's true, it's a dangerous spot to be in. I like that. Um, it's a dangerous spot. Uh, I'm going to 
forego my movement. Ooh, I'm going to activate okay. this worm right here, right. and I'm going to go straight with their grenade. Oh, boy. Uh, the grenade, uh, target hex, accuracy two, so I'm rolling two of those dice. Yep, it could bounce. And it can blast oh, here. Oh, come on, let it bounce. Let it bounce. Five or three. Five or three. Well, I don't think you want three. Definitely not three. And five is going to be right here, right? Oh, yeah, it is. So you're going to go to that hex? Yep. So the grenade blows up here. Yep, it blasts. So the supply crate goes away. It leaves uh, a whole uh, crater for the blast. Yep. And then the mine blows up because the mine took damage. And the mine leaves a crater for the blast as well. So that tile is sunk. Water. We have now completely separated the board. Oh, boy. Oh, interesting. Now, remember. Nice you, grenade, David. You can jump two hexes. You can, but you scatter. You have to roll the die and you might bounce. But you have to scatter. Like, just like that grenade bounced, that you could bounce. That did not go as I'd hoped it would. I'm kind of glad about that as well. Um, and I get to move, by the way, at the end of that grenade. Oh, you do? Where are you going to move? There's a movement here. Um, I'm going to move in there with you. Oh, boy. Okay. All right. You've made my decision tough. Yeah. I had uh, to move in there, otherwise I was just going to be, you're going to stand up and push me off into the water. <laughs> I still might. There's uh, something very satisfying oh, in the video game card. where you go up and you just boop, when they're standing poke someone right off the edge into the water. Okay, here's my drop card. Oil barrel, it's this one. So a supply crate goes into the emptiest hex. That's going to be that one. this one yep. with an oil barrel. Yep. Uh, remove three fire. There is no fire yeah, still. We haven't had any fire yet. Uh, and then change with the wind direction. Doesn't change. Doesn't change. All right. Well, I'm going to do this. I, I'm going to sacrifice my own worm just to get one of your worms oh. off. I'm going to activate this worm. So he'll heal. He'll stand up. He's going to inch over here to this space. And he's going to pick up the supply crate. Ryan, it's ridiculous how many I'm trying of those to get all the gotten. supply crates. And that is just like the video game, too. Those Ooh. supply crates will drop, and someone will just be, oh, I'm a conveniently located. I'm going to go get it. All right. You have all these options. I have I do. four of my starting I'm gonna, cards. I'm going to sacrifice myself here, and I almost guarantee that I'm going to get you. Oh. Uh, so let's play a weapon card Holy Hand Grenade. <laughs> Okay, if you've never played the game, first this of all, you bad. have to go play the video game because the Holy Hand Grenade is fantastic. I'm going to drop it here. Now, it's accuracy two, so it could bounce back at me. It could bounce somewhere else. I really don't want oh, it to bounce. Oh, that would be awesome. And it did. Oh. Oh, ploop. Yeah, it bounced right <laughs> into the water. My Holy <laughs> Hand Grenade. So, uh, had it not bounced into the water, you'd have heard... God. And then it, it does, and it gives me one move. I don't I think you think, move here. No, I don't want to use it. I think you move there. I don't want to use it. I'm surprised it. you don't move right back there. Yeah, it'd be in the same space with my own guy, so you can blast both of us. Well, I'm there too. Well, you could move out of it and then blast me. That's true. No, I'm going to stop right there, and I'm going to draw my drop card. We've only got a few left. Uh, this game takes along pretty quick. Uh, place a supply crate in the emptiest hex. This hex only has one thing. Yeah. Then place a supply uh, uh, supply crate again in the emptiest hex. We've got a bunch of hexes with two things. I don't want you to prod me out by moving <laughs> into either one of these spaces. Uh, let's put it right there. Oh. And then change the wind direction. So yeah, something's going to get prodded out when you move in there. And the wind direction goes to one. Bowen North. <clears throat> All right. Man, is, that holy hand grenade would have been is awesome. Is it back to me? It is. Okay. Uh, let's see. Do I want to move now? So I'm going to move. I'm going to activate this worm yeah, here. I was hoping this would be juicy. And I'm going to move here. Yeah. Get both supply crates. And get both of these supply crates. Whew. Okay. Okay. I am going to play the mortar, though. Oh, that boy. That I just picked up. Target. Oh, it's got to be a direct hex. So... This says a direct hex, which means I can't target this one here right. from this hex. Uh, it's not a direct line from you. So I'm going to stick with the mortar anyway, and I'm going to target this hex right here. Now, it could blow that way. It could. Oh, but it wouldn't go two anyway. Oh, that's right. You're right. I could target this hex. You could. And hopefully, because it's going to scatter. It is. 
Mm. You could do that. You could target this hex with it and hope the wind blows them more. I am going to do that. That's a big part of the game because you've got the wind in your favor exactly, right now. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I'm going to target this hex. It's an accuracy of four, so I would get four, but it's yep one away. One away. So you're going to so roll I'm three. So I'm going to roll three. And let's roll three fours. No, I want to roll the three wind. fours here. Oh no. There's three, four, five. Four. Oh no, three, four, five. Three. The whole back arc. Oh. <laughs> However, uh, oh yeah, that is, it's gonna, <laughs> it's gonna splash. Blue. You get to choose which hex it splashes into though. Uh, and you don't scatter it again and no, blast the hex? Oh, you would scatter. So it does, because of this, um, so accuracy four, you rolled it, it scatters here and would blast this hex, which is water. However, this one actually scatters again. So you do have a chance. Now, you're probably not going to hit anything but that tile. But yeah, you get to scatter it again. But I roll one die You roll time. one die this time. Yep. Four. Four. It goes even farther out in the water. So your mortar just... Poosh. We are way off target we today. We are super off target. Well, draw your drop card. I think this is the last one before oh we go boy. into sudden death. Okay, mine. Yep. Place the supply crate in the emptiest hex. That would be that one up there. Just yeah. one thing in it. Emptiest hex. Place a mine in the same hex. Oh, oh boy. that's a dangerous hex. Yes, it is. Uh, and then change the wind direction. Same. Nope. All right. Stays the same. I'm gonna, oh, I did ooh. get to move again. Oh, yeah. Did you want to? At the end of that. End of that. Um, I think I'm going to move right here. Okay. Well, I'm going to move out of there. So I'll activate this one. I'll move out of there. And I will uh, play my weapon card, which is a homing pigeon. Oh no. I'm gonna target this hex. No accuracy roll required. It just flat out targets that hex. <sighs> and it blasts that hex. So the first thing that happens, we are gonna make a crater there. It's gonna damage everything in there. Um, it's gonna start with the worm and then it's gonna go to the oil barrel. So the worm is first. So I have to roll to see what direction the blast moves him. I'm hoping he goes with the wind and plops into the water here. Uh, six, <laughs> which he does. He does bounce into the water. Bloop. This is a tale of the ocean, this, this game. So now the uh, oil barrel gets uh, blown up. It does a damage. And whenever you deal a, uh, damage to the oil barrel, you roll five dice. Oh, and man. you add fire to all of the rolled locations. So, um, one, five, one. So really, just five. Uh, which is here. So this is the first time that we've seen fire in a game. Now, if a worm moves into this space with the fire token, they're going to take a damage. And you'll also notice that placing this fire token here is going to make there be four things in that space, which normally you can't do, but that really only factors in when you move into a space. So if a worm moves in, they have to prod until there's only three items. Yeah. So we place one there. And then I did roll uh, that X token, which indicates the target space. So we're going to add a fire into that target space as well. Oh, a fire, not a crater. So there's two things in this space and four things in that space. And those fires will stay there until somebody steps into them. So I would call that a fairly successful homing pigeon. I mean, um, it was dangerous homing pigeon. And now the only drop card left is sudden death. So that was this. Is I have one worm game. left. You have one worm left. I have all. No. Yeah, I do have all four. You have all four. One HP. From now on, when worms are damaged, they are destroyed. Every round, we're going to drop a supply crate in the emptiest hex and change the wind direction. So there are two, 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 two. So I get to choose. I'm going to drop it up here with the fire, and then I will change the wind direction uh, to four. So we're going to spin it around here just like that. All right. So, uh, yeah, I've got uh, four left, David. Yeah, and four send the to my one. All you have to do is do one damage now. So anything, even like the Uzi can kill a worm at this point. So your odds are not looking great. Unfortunately, I used my Uzi already, uh, but I've got some other stuff. Uh, uh, I got some stuff here. All right. Well, I'm activating this only worm that I have here. My question is, do I want Yes, you do. Come this. and get it. Come and get it. I think. Ding, 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 ding. I think I'm gonna risk it because I've got. I don't have a lot. You're to right. Really I get think much if you done. don't, if you don't get a, you have to risk it at this point because I can just hit you with one damage and you're dead. With, yeah. Because of sudden death. I mean, I kind of think you have to risk it. Yeah, I have to risk it. So I'm gonna inch here. Yep. All right. So 
And now, then I've got to flip this token. Well, these things trigger at the same time. That's true. So you get to decide the order. So you probably want to draw your supply crate first. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw the supply crate. Oh. <laughs> All right. I like the sound of that. Yeah, I think I'm going to use that. But before I do, I need to flip this token to resolve this mine. Yeah. This has a safe side and a dangerous side. We'll see what happens here. I'm going to flip it here. <laughs> hey! It's safe, but it's not a dexterity game. You don't do damage to everybody. <laughs> I'm safe. It was worthwhile, and it was worthwhile. So that was my first move. I could move again. Yep. Yeah, I think I am going to move again. I'm going to move back here. All right. And now I'm going to play the card that I just drew. Ooh, what is it? The Napalm Strike. So this oh. targets, it says target airstrike. There's another card in airstrike. Ooh. And there's these, a few airstrike targets. This has a unique targeting mechanism because you flip this token over and you're gonna place it in any hex because if you played the video game, you get to choose where you're dropping this thing. But a lot of things can affect this. I'm gonna choose a hex and point it in a direction. I think I'm gonna choose, uh, I think I'm gonna choose this hex and point it in that direction. Oh, interesting. You better hope it doesn't move south even just a little bit. I know. I mean, I'm I'm banking on you're getting, getting the target. Before you before you deal damage, you have to scatter the target. It could move. It could. It could, and this will be I hope it does. So it says, uh, scatter the target, yeah. then damage things in the target hexes. The target hexes, just so you know, are this, this, and this. Currently. So it's yep. those three. And then place a fire in those hex hexes too. So I want... Boom! That's on target. Yeah, that is on target. So, target, yeah. so the only things that would have been, well, there could have been a lot of things that went wrong here. Yeah, no, that's... On target, that's a five would have been okay, a two would have been okay. A target is the best possible scenario, though. So, now it's going to I would have rather had a one. All, yeah, of course, or the wind. Um, yeah, wind would have been damaged nice, Damaged things actually. in this hexes, so... No, I think it's worth noting now, we should say, uh, the majority of this dice is either wind or stay where it is. So even though we haven't seen those a lot, you, uh, probability says that you kind of know where it's... You can kind of predict where it's going to go. Wait, what happened? Oh, yeah. damage things in both hexes. Oh, that also means these things... Yeah. So ...are going to blow up too. The, the worms are gone because they have one hit point. And place fire. So we've got fire from that, fire from that. And now we have to blow up those barrels. Which one are you doing first? I'll, I'll do this barrel here. Uh, so there's fire already there. There's fire already in the wind. Well, there's fire actually already all, all the spots that can be all fire. Spots. So never mind. What do we even need to roll? But that's Because these are both going to blow up and they're going to spread fire everywhere. But there already is fire everywhere. So. Woo! Well, it's not as bad. I still think I'm about to lose yeah. because all you need to do is one damage. Did you use your Uzi? Uh, I did use my Uzi. The Uzi is one of the few things that's like a guaranteed hit. Um, so we'll have to see this. And Ryan's probably, well, you're probably going to move over here. Um, well, here's what I've got. Oh, wait. Uh, oh, yeah. Did anything happen? Oh, we have to place a supply crate on the emptiest? Yeah. That would be yeah, here. Yeah, that makes sense. Or I guess here. And then change the wind direction. Uh, change the wind direction. Where are the dice? Yeah, I think I do. I, I uh, change the direction remains the same. I do have one more weapon. Oh, you do? I have so one of the cards I drew earlier was a jetpack, which would have been great to fly across the uh, map. That would have been I nice. had my girder, my ninja rope. So I was gonna use the ninja rope because the ninja rope lets you play another card. Yeah, I had a lot of stuff that was defensive. Um, but what I have left here, I will activate this worm and drop a mine. Target your own hex. So at the end of my turn, if there are no worms in the space, it just drops a mine like normal. However, if there are worms in the space, the space gets blasted. Oh. So I am going to move out of that space. And I'm done. So this is going to get blasted. So we're going to blast you. You're going to take a damage either way, but I do want to yeah. see which way your body flies. <laughs> That is always the fun part. This way. Three. Oh, right. Right in. towards me. But you take a damage from the hit. My worm body flies right into your area. This would have been interesting if you had lived because then there'd be four things in the hex. But oh, that would be. But it didn't happen yes. because you blow up. That was at least I got two of your worms. 
Oh, uh, you did. And that was quite a big, that whole area of the board is just on fire right now. Yeah, and again, this is just a two player game. So in four players, there's gonna be two more of these tiles yeah. and a whole bunch of more worms. Yeah. It's gonna be very chaotic. Uh, plus, you're gonna have a lot more targets to- Oh around. yeah, for sure. I really wanna play this with the, with the bigger map. And also I've heard that they are uh, going to be introducing some new tiles and some new kind of map designs for the Kickstarter as well. So that'll be really cool. Yeah, it'll be really interesting to see. If you have any questions about this at all, I mean, you saw everything. Usually yeah, in really, round one, we do a wrap up, but we, you saw every you single You did see everything. I will, I will say, um, from my perspective, and to address concerns, I think maybe from some gamers out there that are like me, maybe this is my love of worms, but when something happens, like I throw the holy hand grenade and it bounces into the water. It doesn't feel bad. No, because it's just like worms. Well, and also I'm seeing you miss a mortar. I'm seeing you miss, you yeah. know, your 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 uh, rock or bazooka. I'm seeing like, so everybody is missing. It's not like, you know, it's rare that you're going to be the most punished person at the table. Right. It's just a, it's just a whole bunch of everyone going around making mistakes and screwing things up and maybe even accidentally blowing up their own worms, uh, which is, yeah. a, which if, is cool. It's, it's thematic. If and, it didn't have that, it wouldn't be worms. Right. And, and I know we, <laughs> we've said that a lot in this video. And if you haven't played worms, uh, hopefully this game still appeals to you from that sense of like, if you just want to see crazy stuff happen on the board, as you've seen, like, and, and it's so like, you can be down one to four. And like David took out two of my worms in one go. Yeah, crazy so. things can happen because he, if he didn't have that particular card, uh, in one of our warm up games, I opened with a Molotov cocktail and threw it one space away and the wind blew it right back at it's, me. And I can't tell you how similar that is to things that happen in the video Yeah, game. rolling that holy hand grenade and watching it roll past bloop, bloop, and then bloop, just go into down the water. That, into the water. Yeah, you're like, oh no. Uh, that was really cool. And so if I hadn't had that, if I hadn't had a weapon left, I would have had to fly over to the other side of the board and risk the fire. Yeah, this is so, kind of a hellscape over yeah, here right it really now. Is. You want to watch out. There was for no it. way to get those supply crates without dying. So. Anyway, that was Worms the board game. If you have any questions at all about it, please make them in the comments below. Yeah. We'll keep talking to you about the experience <laughs> and some of the other cop versions of the game that we've yeah. played before now. Uh, until next time, of course, make sure everyone has fun at the table and we'll see you then.